Welcome to our channel. Today we will explore a special ingredient in Japanese cuisine, swordfish. This fish is not only famous for its unique shape, but also for its rich and flavorful taste, making it a popular ingredient in high-end restaurants in Japan. Let's discover how the Japanese transform swordfish into wonderful dishes. Swordfish, also known as Xiphius gladius, is a highly valued marine species, esteemed for its large size and delicious meat. With its long, slender body and sharp, sword-like nose, the swordfish is not only a wonder of the ocean, but also a precious resource in the fishing industry. Swordfish typically inhabits deep sea areas, where they swim swiftly, making them a challenging and thrilling target for fishermen. This has created a swordfish fishing industry with many advanced techniques to meet the high demand from international markets, especially in Japanese cuisine. The swordfish fishing industry, along with the growing consumption demand in Japan, has become an integral part of the marine economy. Additionally, the connection between this industry and Japanese cuisine has created a sustainable value chain, where swordfish serves not only as a food source, but also as a bridge between humans and the sea. This has contributed to making swordfish a symbol of sophistication, strength, and a deep connection with the ocean, attracting not only food enthusiasts, but also those passionate about ocean exploration. Longline fishing not only requires precision in identifying fishing locations, but also demands that fishermen possess patience and skill to control the lines. From calculating the optimal time to drop the lines based on the periods when swordfish are most active to carefully checking and retrieving the lines, every detail must be executed accurately. Furthermore, the use of longline fishing helps minimize the impact on the marine environment compared to some other fishing methods, as it focuses on target species with less harm to other marine organisms. In Japanese cuisine, swordfish is not just an ingredient, but also carries cultural and traditional significance. The Japanese particularly enjoy the rich flavor and firm texture of swordfish, making it an ideal choice for sashimi and tataki dishes. With its pale pink flesh, rich in fat and unique flavor, swordfish is often prepared meticulously to preserve its natural sweetness. The process of preparing and slicing swordfish by Japanese chefs is a delicate art that reflects a profound respect for the ingredient and culinary traditions. When a fresh swordfish is brought to the kitchen, the chef begins with a thorough inspection to ensure the quality of the meat. First, the swordfish is placed on a large cutting board, with natural light enhancing the color of its pale pink flesh and glossy skin. Slicing the fish is not merely a preparation step, but also a ritual where each knife stroke requires precision and skill. Japanese chefs use a special knife, typically a Yanagiba knife forged from high-quality steel, to achieve perfect cuts. They start from the body of the fish, skillfully slicing it into thin pieces, revealing the firm, tender flesh while retaining its freshness.
The sashimi slices from swordfish are usually about one to two centimeters thick, just enough for diners to appreciate its natural sweetness without feeling overwhelmed. This technique demands a perfect combination of speed and precision. A miscut can compromise the dish's aesthetic and flavor. In addition to sashimi, chefs can create other dishes from swordfish, such as garlic butter grilled swordfish. To prepare this dish, take 200 grams of swordfish fillet and season it with a bit of salt and pepper. Then, coat the fillet with a layer of flour and pan sear it. Once the surface of the fish is golden, add two cherry tomatoes and 30 grams of butter along with minced garlic. Drizzle the sauce evenly over the fish, adding a tablespoon of soy sauce, a little black pepper and parsley to complete the appetizing dish. Swordfish is not only favored for its delicious taste, but also provides significant nutritional benefits. First, swordfish is a rich source of protein, supplying all the essential amino acids necessary for the body, aiding in tissue building and repair, and is vital for muscle development and overall health. Additionally, swordfish contains omega-3 fatty acids, a type of beneficial unsaturated fat for heart health, helping to reduce bad cholesterol and increase good cholesterol. Moreover, swordfish is a rich source of various vitamins and minerals, including vitamin B12, vitamin D, selenium, and niacin. Did you know that the fish Hypostomus placostomus, often regarded as an invasive species, is now creating a new wave in Japanese cuisine? This fish, famous for its ability to clean the bottoms of rivers and ponds, has become a unique ingredient in the innovative dishes of Japan. Let's explore the journey from a fish that no one wants to, a special component in surprising dishes from the land of cherry blossoms. Hypostomus plecostomus, commonly known as the suckermouth catfish, or common pleco, is a popular ornamental fish in aquariums. This species belongs to the family Loricariidae and originates from the rivers and streams of South America, particularly the Amazon River Basin. The pleco stands out with its thick and tough scales, resembling a natural armor that protects it from environmental threats. Its body is typically dark brown or black with yellow or orange spots, creating a striking and unique appearance. One of the most remarkable features of Hypostomus plecostomus is its excellent tank cleaning abilities. They love to eat algae and biofilm on glass, rocks and aquatic plants, helping to maintain water clarity in aquariums. This makes them an indispensable cleaning staff in aquariums. Additionally, plecos are easy to care for, tolerant of various environmental conditions and have a relatively long lifespan, often ranging from 10 to 15 years if properly maintained. Besides their important role in cleaning fish tanks, Hypostomus plecostomus also adds natural beauty to aquatic environments. They typically move gently and adhere to surfaces with their specialized sucker mouth, creating an intriguing spectacle to observe. With their unique appearance, high adaptability, and practical benefits in keeping tanks clean, 
plecos truly are an ideal choice for aquarium enthusiasts. Catching Hypostomus plecostomus can be an exciting experience if you know how to use simple and effective methods. The Japanese often use nets of moderate size to catch not only the pleco, but also other fish species. The nets are placed along flowing water where plecos swim easily. Hand catching or using small nets is also a popular method in shallow rivers or small streams. In these areas, people can easily spot plecos clinging to rocks or hard surfaces in the water. A small net is used for direct and quick capture. Plecos are generally more active at night. The Japanese take advantage of this to catch fish more effectively. They use specialized flashlights or underwater lighting to spot fish at night, then use nets or scoops to catch them. This method helps them easily see the fish when they move near the shore or swim to the surface for feeding. So, what does this fish taste like in cuisine? Preparing Hypostomus plecostomus for meals is not very common. However, in certain areas, it is still cooked when food sources are limited. Structurally, the body of Hypostomus plecostomus is covered with hard, armor-like scales. This makes cleaning and preparing it more difficult and time-consuming compared to other fish. The meat of this species is also not plentiful due to its long body and flat abdomen. Chefs often use scissors to facilitate handling the fish, from cutting off fins to slicing open the belly to remove the internal organs. Next, they separate the head and drop the body into boiling water. Using heat to soften the fish skin before removing it can save effort, especially with fish that have tough skin like Hypostomus plecostomus. The skin will become softer after being boiled, making it easier to remove with a spoon or knife. After the skin is removed, the fish meat is usually prepared in dishes such as tomato sauce, grilled or fried. The meat of Hypostomus plecostomus has a firm and quite chewy texture, because the fish usually lives at the bottom and continuously adheres to surfaces in the water. Therefore, the meat is not as tender as that of other fish. This makes the pleco less popular as a main dish, but it is suitable for soups or stews, where the fishy smell is reduced and the meat becomes softer. Although the flavor is not prominent, plecos are rich in protein, which supports muscle building and recovery, along with small amounts of omega-3 fatty acids that help protect cardiovascular health. The fish also contains many minerals such as iron, phosphorus and calcium, which support bone health and the nervous system. Beneath the vast ocean floor, where diverse marine life unfolds every day, there exists a remarkable species of fish that few people know about, Hapologinus nigripinus. So what is the flavor of this fish when prepared in traditional Japanese dishes? Let's begin this journey of discovery together. Hapologenes nigripinis, 
commonly known as the short-barbled velvetchen or short-barbled grunter, is a unique species belonging to the family Hapologenidae. This fish is primarily found in the Western Pacific Ocean, especially in Japan, Korea, and coastal areas of China. Hapologenes nigripinis stands out with its robust body, shimmering silver scales, and notably, its dark pectoral fins on both sides, creating a distinctive feature that sets it apart in the ocean world. The short, barbled grunter typically inhabits shallow waters and sandy bottoms, where coral reefs and seagrass provide ample hiding spots for hunting. This fish not only has high ecological value, but also serves as a quality food source for humans. The meat of Hapologenes nigripinis is rich in protein, low in fat, and has a distinct flavor, making it popular in the cuisine of East Asian countries. Furthermore, Hapologenes nigripinis plays an important role in maintaining the marine ecosystem contributing to the biodiversity of the region. However, due to overfishing and environmental pollution, the population of short barbled grunter in the wild is declining. Therefore, protecting and managing the resources of this fish is not only the responsibility of fishermen, but also a crucial part of sustaining a healthy marine ecosystem. So, how is this special fish prepared to become a delightful dish? Let's start with removing its scales, which are silver or greyish with a metallic sheen, relatively fine and small, but they adhere firmly to the skin, providing a natural protective layer for the fish's body. Using a knife or a scaler, Scrape from the tail towards the head, against the direction of scale growth to facilitate easier removal. After removing the scales and rinsing thoroughly, the Japanese chef carefully makes an incision in the belly of the fish to avoid rupturing its internal organs. The internal organs of Hapologenis nigripinis include some parts that are favored in Japanese cuisine, such as the liver, roe, intestines, and stomach. However, they need to be cleaned thoroughly and should only be consumed if one has knowledge of safe preparation methods. Next, the chef will separate the head of the fish and proceed to fillet it. Using a sharp knife, place the blade behind the gills and cut at an angle, decisively separating the head from the body. Cut downward, ensuring the knife pierces through the fish's spine. The head can be reserved for making broth or stock. Starting from the cut head, the chef will slice along the spine of the fish from head to tail to separate the fillet. The blade is always kept close to the spine to maximize the amount of meat collected, creating thick and intact fillets. The leftover belly bones and small remaining bones will be meticulously removed to prepare for the next cooking steps. The first dish is sashimi. This fish has a relatively thick and firm skin with a distinctive fishy flavor if consumed completely raw, so chefs usually handle it by lightly grilling the skin. When the skin is gently grilled, the fat beneath the skin is released, creating a unique and enticing aroma. This gentle cooking of the skin enhances the flavor of the fish, creating a harmonious blend of the richness of the fat and the fresh sweetness of the fish meat. The sashimi slices will then have a soft and smooth texture, 
complemented by a crispy and chewy skin, providing a diverse tasting experience. The meat of Hapologenis nigripinis is not overly soft, but has a just right firmness, creating a lightly chewy yet easily melting sensation that is very pleasant when eating sashimi. Next, we have the dish of short barbled grunter in sweet and sour sauce, which sounds tempting, right? The fish meat will be cut into bite-sized pieces and marinated with a bit of seasoning. After absorbing the flavors, they will be coated evenly with a layer of potato starch. When the oil is hot, the chef will fry the fish pieces until golden. The essence of this dish lies in the sweet and sour sauce, which consists of chicken broth, sugar, sake, mirin, vinegar, ketchup, and soy sauce. When the fish is cooked, various vegetables will be added, and the sauce will be poured in, gently stirring to allow the flavors to meld together. As the sweet and sour sauce coats the fried fish, it evenly adheres to each piece, creating a glossy layer that makes each bite more flavorful and enticing. Papalogenes nigripinis not only delivers delicious flavors, but also offers numerous health benefits. This fish is a high quality protein source, essential for muscle growth and recovery, cellular repair, and tissue maintenance in the body. Additionally, it contains omega-3 fatty acids, which are beneficial for heart health, help reduce inflammation, and support brain function. Hapologenes nigripinis also provides a variety of vitamins and minerals, such as vitamin B12, vitamin D, selenium, iodine, and phosphorus, all of which are crucial for growth and maintaining health. Spotted knife jaw, also known as Ishigaki Dai, is a distinctive fish belonging to the Oplegnathidae family. Its scientific name is Oplegnathus punctatus, and it primarily inhabits the tropical and subtropical waters of the northwestern Pacific, including the coastal regions of Japan, Korea, and parts of the South China Sea. Ishigakidai features a disc-shaped body that is flattened from the sides, giving it a robust and impressive appearance. Adult fish typically measure around 50 centimeters in length, though some can reach up to 90 centimeters. The standout feature of spotted knife jaw is its skin adorned with black and white patterns, resembling meticulously arranged pebbles. This unique characteristic is the reason behind its Japanese name, Ishigaki Dai, which translates to stone pebblefish. The spotted knife jaw has a beak-like mouth with hard and sharp teeth, which allows it to easily crush the hard shells of crustaceans, mollusks, and sea urchins, its favorite foods. In Japan, it is commonly found in the southern waters where the currents are warm. The fish typically resides in shallow waters near rocky reefs and coral beds, where it can hide and hunt. Spotted knife jaw is a premium ingredient in Japanese cuisine. Its white, firm, and naturally sweet flesh makes it a highly desirable dish. Ishigaki Dai is not only valued for its culinary attributes, but also holds cultural and economic significance. This fish is considered a symbol of prosperity and good fortune in Japanese culture. As such, the fishing and processing of spotted knife jaw not only provide income for fishermen, but also contribute to the preservation and development of traditional cultural values.
The price of spotted knife jaw at Japanese markets can vary depending on size, freshness, and season. Fresh spotted knife jaw, especially larger and high quality specimens, can cost between 5,000 to 10,000 yen per kilogram, approximately 45 to 90 USD kigus. If the fish is cleaned and filleted or prepared into products like sashimi, the price may increase to between 8,000 to 15,000 yen per kilogram, about 72 to 135 USD kiglam, depending on the quality of preparation and freshness of the fish. Now let's watch how the Japanese prepare spotted knife jaw into an exquisite sashimi dish. First, they use a scaler or a sharp knife to remove all the scales. Spotted knife jaw has a tough and thick scale, particularly near the dorsal fin, which is challenging to remove and requires careful handling to avoid puncturing with the fish's spines. Next, they make an incision along the belly to remove the internal organs. The internal organs are usually not used because they may accumulate ciguatera toxins from their diet, especially in larger fish. Additionally, the internal organs often have an unpleasant odor and taste, with a soft, mushy and easily breakable texture, unsuitable for many cooking methods. The fish's head is cut off with a clean cut just behind the gills. The head and tail are not typically eaten, but can be used to make stock or in stews. Using a sharp fillet knife, they cut along the backbone to separate the flesh from the bones. Starting from the head, they carefully slice along the spine to split the flesh into two fillets. The backbone and rib bones are removed, leaving only the firm, white flesh. Fish bones can be used to make stock for adding rich flavor to dishes, but for safety reasons, the Japanese often discard them due to the risk of toxins. For sashimi, the fish skin is often left on to preserve freshness and texture. The Japanese may lightly grill the skin before slicing it into sashimi slices. For those who do not prefer the skin, it is removed by using a sharp knife to peel from the tail end, holding the skin firmly and sliding the knife along the length of the fish. Finally, the sashimi slices are cut and enjoyed with wasabi and soy sauce. Thanks to its delicate, sweet flavor and unique texture, Spotted knife jaw sashimi is particularly cherished and is a popular dish in Japanese cuisine. Ishigakidai not only shines with sashimi, but also offers many other delightful dishes, showcasing the diversity of Japanese cuisine. Sushi with spotted knife jaw is a standout dish that emphasizes the elegance and quality of the fish. Thin slices of fresh spotted knife jaw are placed on small sushi rice balls, perfectly blending with the vinegar and seasoning of the rice. This combination highlights the fish's subtle flavor and creates a light and enjoyable dish. When grilled, spotted knife jaw presents an enticing transformation. The firm fish is lightly seasoned with salt, pepper, and sometimes a touch of teriyaki sauce, before being grilled over charcoal or in an oven. Grilled spotted knife jaw is often served with side dishes like grilled vegetables or rice, providing a complete and harmonious dining experience. Each method of preparing spotted knife jaw not only highlights the distinctive flavor of this fish, but also allows you to explore the richness of Japanese cuisine. From delicate sashimi to light sushi and flavorful grilled or fried dishes, Spotted Knife Jaw offers a diverse and rich culinary experience.
Today, we will delve into the journey of hunting and processing whales, a traditional dish of the Japanese people known for its intricacy and meticulousness in preparation. Have you ever wondered why Japan has a tradition of whale hunting and how the process of handling these giant creatures unfolds? Surrounded by oceans on all sides, Japan has utilized whale meat as a vital food source since ancient times. The seas around Japan, serving as migratory routes for whales and a resource-rich environment for numerous whale species, have strongly influenced Japan's whale-eating culture. The Japanese have hunted whales since prehistoric times. During the Jomon period, around 6,000 years ago, stranded whales were seen as a blessing from the sea. Historical artifacts from the Jomon period suggest that ancient Japanese might have actively pursued whaling at this time. Besides being used as food, inedible whale parts, such as bones, were effectively utilized for crafting pottery. With the introduction of Buddhism in Japan during the Asuka period, the consumption of meat was generally prohibited, leading people to rely primarily on fish for animal protein. At that time, whale meat was considered seafood similar to fish, and thus a valuable ingredient. By the early Edo period, organized whaling operations began. With the development of an effective method known as net whaling, the supply of whale meat increased significantly. In Edo, people commonly ate whale soup with salted whale skin after the Susuharai ceremony on December 13th, the end of the year. The book Whale Meat Cho Ami, published at the end of the Edo period, introduced methods for preparing different parts of the whale with up to 70 different parts used. In the 19th century, with Japan opening up to the outside world, its whaling techniques continued to evolve and modernize. Japan began using steamships and harpoons for larger-scale whaling. This development marked a transformation in Japan's whaling industry, making the country one of the largest whalers in the world. Throughout the 20th century, whaling became a significant industry in Japan. Whales were used for various purposes, from food to oil and other byproducts. After World War II, as Japan was rebuilding, whale meat became an essential food source, providing protein to the population during tough times. As a result, by around 1950, with beef prices falling and fresh fish prices at their lowest, whale meat began to pile up, with Taiyo fishing storing over 930,000 kan Hanawan Kan, 3.75 kiam, in cold storage, equivalent to about 300 million yen. The company developed the market and successfully exported canned food to Taiwan. Production continued to increase significantly, reaching 138,000 tons in 1958 and peaking at 226,000 tons in 1962. From the 1970s, animal rights and environmental movements began condemning whaling, arguing that it threatened the existence of many whale species and harmed marine ecosystems. In 1982, the International Whaling Commission, IWC, imposed a global ban on commercial whaling, forcing Japan to halt large-scale whaling activities. In 2018, Japan officially withdrew from the IWC and announced it would resume commercial whaling from 2019, but only within its own waters. At that time, brides' whales would be the primary target of whaling activities. By May 2024, Japan started hunting fin whales after five years of commercial whaling. Japan caught a total of 294 minka whales, brides' whales, and SA whales last year, said the fisheries agency which currently limits commercial whaling to the three relatively minor species.
Japan's whaling ship stands out with a tonnage of 9,299 tons and a length of 112.6 meters. Specifically designed to operate effectively in remote and harsh seas, whaling vessels can undertake long voyages to cold areas such as Antarctica. Equipment on board includes the most advanced technology and equipment to carry out the entire process of catching and processing whales right at sea. From hunting whales with specialized fishing gear, ships have equipment to process and butcher whales immediately after capture, ensuring the preservation of product quality in modern cold storages on board. The ship is also equipped with tracking and research systems to collect data on whale species for scientific purposes. However, the ship's activities are not only aimed at research, but also have economic purposes, processing whale meat to supply the Japanese domestic market. The first step in this journey is a profound understanding of marine geography and the behavior of whale species. Experienced sailors will rely on cues such as ocean waves, geographical environment, and traces of fish to determine their potential locations. When arriving at waters where whales are likely to be present, the ship uses radar and sonar to detect whales underwater. After detecting the target, the ship approaches and uses harpoons equipped with explosives to catch the whale quickly and with minimal pain. When whales are caught, all attention and focus are directed towards hauling them onto the ship. No matter how large and powerful the target may be, the crew always prioritizes safety, so they must coordinate closely and use collective strength to overcome any challenges. After the whale is safely brought aboard, the sailors begin the process of processing the catch. Each step requires certainty and precision, from preparing tools to sorting and butchering each part one by one. The first step in butchering the whale is removing the thick layer of skin and blubber. You might think these two would be discarded items, but no, both are valuable fatty and omega-rich parts that can be used for fatty and rich sashimi dishes or rendered over a golden fire to enhance their distinctive flavor. The next part, cut after the skin and blubber, is usually the bone and muscle of the back or fluke region. This is the meat part that can be easily accessed and processed immediately after cutting off the skin and blubber. The bones and muscles of the back or fluke region can be used to make whale broth, adding flavor and nutrients to soups such as hot pots or broths. Whale bones can also be used to produce bone-derived products, such as gelatin or bone meal, used in the food and pharmaceutical industries. After cutting out the meat from the back region, the butcher will continue cutting from other parts of the whale's body, including areas like the belly, underbelly, and any other meaty parts if present. The meat cutting process needs to be done carefully and precisely to separate the meat 
without damaging its structure and ensuring food safety and hygiene. In the precious meat parts of the whale, each part brings a distinct and enticing flavour. Whale meat can contain vitamins such as vitamin B12, vitamin D, vitamin E, and minerals such as iron, zinc, and selenium. These vitamins and minerals are essential for various functions in the body, including growth, immune function, and nerve function. The chunks of meat and fat were then placed into styrofoam containers where they were preserved with layers of ice. Using foam boxes and ice helps keep meat fresh during transportation from ship to place of sale. Have you ever tried whale sashimi? Whale sashimi is a unique and rare dish, considered a specialty in some regions of Japan. Whale meat for sashimi is often taken from the best parts of the whale, such as the back and belly. The whale meat slices are thinly sliced, have a characteristic dark red color and smooth texture. The flavor of whale sashimi is often described as rich, slightly fatty, and has a bit of natural sweetness. Whale blubber for sashimi is cut into thin slices and is usually white or ivory in color with a soft and smooth texture. The flavor of whale blubber is very unique, often described as greasy, slightly sweet, and has a bit of a natural sea taste. In Japanese cuisine, perhaps we will more often see images of swordfish or marlinfish being prepared than sailfish, right? Although not popular, sailfish still has a special place in culinary culture here. Let's explore with me how the process of processing sailfish into unique delicious dishes is. Have you ever heard of a giant fish as strong as an ocean warrior? That is the giant trevally fish, a powerful predatory fish that surprises everyone with its size and strength. But what really shocks us is the way Japanese cuisine, with great sophistication and artistry, turns this giant fish into wonderful, unique, and incredibly attractive dishes. Let's explore the surprising journey from sea to dinner table in today's video. Giant trevally, Caranx ignobilis, also known as lowly trevally, barrier trevally, ronin jack, giant kingfish, or ulua, is a giant fish in the family Carangidae living in tropical and subtropical waters of Indian Ocean and Pacific Ocean. With a size of up to 1.7 meters and a weight of more than 80 kilos, giant trevally is distinguished by its strong oval body, sloping head and strongly forked tail. Their color is usually silver with a darker back and brighter belly. Sometimes large ones even have a characteristic black color. Giant trevally inhabits a variety of marine environments, from coral reefs to lagoons to the open ocean, and can be found at depths of more than 100 meters. As predatory fish, they feed on small fish, 
crustaceans, mollusks, and sometimes even seabirds, with aggressive hunting skills and powerful swimming abilities, often hunting alone. In Japan, this species is called In Japan, this species is called GT, short for giant trevally. In sharp contrast to white trevally, whose commercial popularity is based on its delicious taste, giant trevally is not highly appreciated in the culinary scene. Their meat does not have the delicate flavor and softness that the Japanese often prefer, and is even quite tough and has a pungent smell not suitable for sashimi or sushi dishes, which require freshness and mild flavor. Their price is relatively low, and in Okinawa it seems to be traded for 400 to 500 yen per kilogram. Giant trevally is not a naturally poisonous fish. However, like many other marine fish, it can cause ciguatera poisoning if eaten a toxin produced by marine algae of the genus Gambiadiscus. Large fish that eat a lot of smaller fish that contain ciguatoxin can accumulate the toxin in their bodies. Ciguatera poisoning cannot be eliminated by cooking or freezing fish, so consumers need to be careful when eating large fish from tropical and subtropical regions where Gambiadiscus algae thrive. Although not all giant trevally fish have the presence of this toxin, consuming it should be done carefully and with clear source information. Surely now you are wondering, why is it in the category of videos about Japanese cuisine? Because Japanese cuisine is so diverse and rich, People here also have a passion for experiencing and consuming many different unique fish species, including giant trevally. So let's see how they prepare this fish. The preparation process usually starts with removing the giant trevally's scales. Their scales are quite large and hard, making removal more difficult and time-consuming than other fish species. To remove them, you need to use specialized tools to save effort and time. After removing the scales, the chef will cut open the giant trevally's abdomen and remove the unused part. The giant trevally's internal organs are covered by a solid membrane that connects the organs to the gills, so pulling them out is quite difficult. Chefs need to be careful when handling them, because if they break, the fish will have a very unpleasant odour. Giant Trevally's internal organs contain ciguatoxin and parasites. Although they can be eaten, they need to be prepared and cooked properly to ensure food safety. But especially for the liver, where there are twice as many toxins, what we need to do is eliminate them immediately. To taste the meat flavor of this fish is not easy. Next is cutting the fish head. With an extremely strong bone structure, it is necessary to use knives that are large and sharp enough to cut it, even scissors and pliers. And now comes the next challenge, giant trevally fillet. The chef places the knife close to the spine and starts cutting along the structure of the bone down to the tail. The bones of this fish are quite rough, especially on the edges, making the process of separating the meat from the bones quite difficult.
Finally, when peeling the skin of giant trevally, chefs often cut off the collagen fibers connecting the skin and meat of the fish because their texture is quite tough and not suitable for the dish. Giant trevally filet will be cut into thin slices of sashimi by the chef and eaten with wasabi and soy sauce. They can also be prepared into a variety of dishes such as grilled, fried or stewed. Although giant trevally's meat has a tough texture, and is often considered difficult to eat, it is still considered a rich source of nutrients and health benefits. However, this is probably a fish species that is only suitable for those who want to experience new and unique culinary sensations. Sailfish's scientific name is Istiophorus, belonging to the family Istiophoridae. They are considered one of the wonders of the ocean, outstanding with their unique appearance and ability to swim as fast as the wind. With a high dorsal fin like a brilliant sail, an elongated fish body with a sparkling blue color and a shimmering silver belly, the sailfish not only attracts the eye, but is also a speed warrior, able to reach speeds of up to 110 km to h, making them true racers of the sea. They inhabit tropical and subtropical waters around the world, from the Atlantic, Indian and Pacific Oceans, and are often found near the surface of warm water. Sailfish are skilled hunters, preying mainly on small fish such as sardines, herring and mackerel, and even squid and shrimp. An interesting fact about sailfish is their ability to change colour to communicate or attract prey, which further adds to their magic and mystery. With all these outstanding characteristics, it is not difficult to understand why sailfish is honoured as a symbol of strength and speed in the ocean world. This makes them the target of many sport fishing competitions, where passionate fishermen challenge themselves to conquer this fish. Not only has its sporting value, sailfish meat is also popular in Japanese cuisine, bringing unique and diverse culinary experiences. In Japan, sailfish fishing usually begins in the fall, which is the season when their meat quality is considered the best. On beautiful small boats, the fishermen are as persistent and talented as artisans, ready to set sail every morning, starting a journey to conquer the Pacific Ocean. With professionalism and traditional know-how, fishermen are not only brave, but also patient in confronting the challenges posed by the ocean. They know every deep sea where sailfish often appear, combining experience with skilled fishing skills to face the strength and speed of this fish. After completing their sailfish catch, the Japanese sailors returned to port with a sense of satisfaction and pride in their achievements. Small boats rowed toward the shore, each carrying on it large sailfish that had been caught in the early hours of the morning. The sailfish are then brought to local fish markets, where consumers can choose and buy fresh, quality fish. With rich experience, 
Japanese chefs always have their own ways to choose the best quality sailfish. They not only choose sailfish based on size and weight, but also evaluate the meat condition and freshness of each fish. Each choice, every small detail, is carefully considered to ensure that the final dish will bring the most perfect culinary experience to diners. The process of preparing sailfish by Japanese chefs often starts from removing the tail and head because their structure has a high bone ratio so they are not commonly used. Next is to remove the sailfish's scales. They have a layer of scales covering their entire body with a quite sturdy structure to protect their skin and body when moving. Removing them is difficult work. Chefs can choose to use tools to scrape off the scales and rinse the sailfish again. However, most chefs will choose a more convenient way. They will fillet the fish first, then remove the skin of the sailfish, including the scales. Next is to remove the sailfish's internal organs. Like other fish, they contain toxic substances that will be dangerous for people who eat them if they do not know how to handle them. When removing internal organs, chefs also need to be careful to avoid breaking them, which will affect the quality of the meat. Are you wondering why the sailfish's giant dorsal fin is still there and hasn't been removed? Because they have a thorn-like structure with sharp bones and spines with high hardness, removing them is difficult and extremely time-consuming for chefs. They often fillet sailfish first to save time and effort. The fillet process begins with the chef using a knife to cut a straight line from the belly to the tail of the sailfish. The knife is placed close and cuts along the bones of the fish, then separates them carefully to avoid wasting fish meat. Sailfish bones have a completely different structure than other types of fish. Their hardness cannot be cut with regular knives, so chefs need to use a saw. However, using a saw will cause sawdust to stick to the meat even the small scales of the sailfish. They can penetrate the flesh and cause problems when eating because they cannot be completely removed. After the first fillet is cut out, you can see that the sailfish's dorsal fin is held together by muscles and tissue connected to the skeletal system. Removing them will be much easier and less labor-intensive during the filleting process. Next, separate the bones of the fish from the remaining fillet. At this point, separating the bones is much easier. Sail fits abdomen which has membranes containing internal organs, will be gently removed by the chef using a knife. The next step is to remove the sailfish's skin. They are quite smooth, and the outside texture is small scales. The inside is a strong and flexible muscle layer. When removing the skin, Chefs often carefully filter out those muscle fibers. Finally, the chef will cut the sailfish meat into traditional sashimi slices and have them ready for diners to enjoy. Sailfish meat is a nutritious food source and brings many health benefits. In particular, it contains a lot of omega-3 fatty acids, which help protect the heart, reduce inflammation, 
and improve brain function. In addition, sailfish meat